understand that the Sadducees and Pharisee systems are not to be exalted above God. Neither are our systems to be loved more than our God. God is one. What's the greatest commandment? He says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, uh, strength, and mind. Love your second is like unto the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, it is in loving God, it is from the love of God that we serve him, that we serve our neighbor. It was a love for God that would make missionaries come to a drug-infested city, the most drug-infested city in the country, to the point where the mayor would get locked up for trafficking drugs. That means the whole police department is involved. It Drugs ran the place, and you have people who are privileged They didn't need to be there, except they felt and heard a call from a prophet that said, work for Jesus where you're most needed. And they came and they worked. And and it wasn't only those physical hands. Then they would have me as a little boy growing up going to congregations. And those who weren't as crazy as those missionaries who had a little money to give, they would be crazy with their giving. Passionate. When I say passionate, I mean wholeheartedly giving. Not loving with some of their service. I'm talking about leaving mansions to live in places that most would not consider livable. I'm not talking about giving with some of your heart. I'm talking about giving in such an abundance that it could keep expanding and expanding to where all I've known was growth in this system. And it was a challenging system to a lot of places. She had a mental break. They said it would be best if she were home. We didn't know what the problem was. We learned it. We learned what the problem was. And I thank God that we didn't lose her. And I thank God that I had people around me loving me, people who were comforting me, people who were counseling me, that we could stay strong, that we can be strong when she would return to herself. Glad that she had a support system. My first church in the UPCSA, you need to understand I'm hungry. All I've done is go around with the biggest and the, and, and, and the just hungry ministries for more ministry, for more souls. How are we going to do this? Creative. So I come to the UPCSA. I become a part. I get associated with a local church. And uh, they think their church is dying. They think there's There's nothing we can do. They have a school on the ground. School has about 100 learners. But they never found a way to make it work for the church. So I say, look, can I go to the public schools? This is before we formalized the program, Faith for Quality Education, and started with the district director, and great things happened to where it covered over 100 schools. Still is to this day. Uh, But before all of that, I'm in this local church, and I say, can I go to schools and see if we can evangelize some people. They say, sure, people have done that, but nothing has ever come from it. You can try. I said, something is going to come from it. What I'm going to need from you guys, if you can help me out, is I'm going to need a bus and a taxi. And they was like, are you kidding me? A bus and a taxi, how much is that going to cost? I went to find out how much it's going to cost. And... uh, 
I don't even remember today what it was back then. But anyway, they were like, well, we'll see if, if how this works, and if you need that, we'll get it. I went to three schools. The buy-in was wonderful. When it was time for us to go to church, I bought 70 youth to church from the public schools, from, from four different schools. It was a community choir. And uh, Uncle Brian, who was sitting, he's an older man, and uh, now he's about 84 years old. He gets up and he says, I've been in this church for 50 years, and I've never seen so many young people in church. They sang, everybody was happy, and I didn't know that him saying that was going to be slighting the lady who's running the school. Got a hundred folk there every day. They never came to church. Now she felt offended. What am I doing? Why am I telling you that? Because if we're not working for Jesus, we can get to the point where we start working for ourselves and we start fighting each other. We start speaking negatively about each other. Instead of doing the work and being wholeheartedly and crazy about the work, we start being active about how we can stop the work because it's more about him and her as opposed to being about Christ. So the late Michael Moore at this time was my mentor. And, and, and I, I see some folks around here who have been around a while. I'm, I'm the kind of person that I like to gain wisdom from people who've been around a while. Michael Moore said to me, Scott, what you're doing is wonderful. The church needs what you're doing. Maybe this church ain't ready for what you're doing. I need you to Listen, this person's being rubbed the wrong way. I need you to stop. Cut out a couple of the schools. Maybe just have it to where there's about 15 of them that come to the church. Cut out about 60 kids to please somebody's ego. And I said, all right. I'm being tested too. Am I going to be humble enough to listen to authority when I know this is not how I was raised? People cared too much. That would have never happened. All right. I spoke to the principals and told them that the circumstances came. I won't be able to, to come back. We stuck to about 15, and they came, and they came, and we continued doing service, and I realized I had to, just to do the work of the Lord, I got to tiptoe around people, because people love their systems more than they love God. And I made up my mind, I don't want to serve nowhere where people love their system more than they love souls. I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't people who loved God so much they wanted to work. They didn't care what the person looked like. They didn't care their background. And they saw to it that I was educated with the best in the world. They invested into me. And that's what love looks like. Dr. Michael Moore said, look, we go, I just got to get you past this process so that you can serve somewhere where they really want to work for Jesus. Just bear with us. We don't want you to not make it through the process of the UPCSA because of this. So I humbled myself. I did exactly what he said. And he loved me. And I loved him like a father. The Philippians reading, it says, work out your own soul salvation 